welcome everyone to this uh, wonderful story that we have. Joining me today is uh, Samuel Blanco. Hope I pronounced your name correctly, Samuel. Yeah, that's fine. I normally I go by Sam Garcia. All right, Sam. I have too Sam. many surnames to, <laughs> to use them all. Awesome, awesome. Sam's joining me today. He's going to share his story and his journey through uh, the Lifestyle Marketing Program, working with James. And just his overall experience and his journey, the reason why we love sharing these is because other people can see uh, what it takes to, to get to where they want to go. And because everyone comes from a different background, it's good to see what other people are doing. So we just want to share his story. Uh, Sam, thank you for joining me today. Sure. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right in, Sam. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're from and where you currently live? Yeah, so I'm original, originally from Spain. Um, I've, been, I've been living for 12 years in the Czech Republic, but actually now I'm living back in Spain. Uh, this is one of the things that being a location independent allowed me, which is something I always wanted to do. So uh, I'm back in Spain. I live close to my family, and I moved back with my wife, who is Czech. So we are very happily uh, living here. Amazing, amazing. It's really cool when you can do that, right? And you can have the flexibility to go it's, to where you want to go. It's unbelievable. And that's one of the reasons, well, we will cover it in more detail later, but it's one of the reasons I had to quit my, my corporate job because even though it was, a, it was a great job, I was kind of privileged, but it, it wouldn't be able to accommodate for me uh, being living in uh, Spain meaning 3,000 kilometers away from the office. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, so I guess, you know, that's a good segue into what we want to talk about. So let's go ahead and, and, and dive right in. So what, mm -hmm. what problems did you face? So you touched on a little bit the corporate career. So let's, let's mm -hmm. go back. Maybe it's probably where we need to go back to. So what right. problems did you face uh, that made you want to start your own business? Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been working for 12 years in the IT corporate world. So uh, I started working as a technical support. I grew through the support structure. It's what they call level one, level two, level three. Then I was a team leader. Then I was a manager. Then I had a team. All this uh, while well, I was staying in the Czech Republic. Uh, the jobs, well, I, I guess most of, the picture, uh, most of the people have had at some point a nine to five job. Uh, if not, well, you can imagine you need to... <laughs> go to the office, you have, well, you have a lot of limitations. Uh, you have some cool stuff, like you're surrounded by, by people, uh, people you might like, people you might dislike, but you need to go to the office every morning. You need to, uh, well, basically you have a feeling you're working for someone else's dreams or ambitions, right? You don't have the feeling of ownership you don't have the same feeling of accomplishment as if you were working for yourself so once i read in a book that uh, no one has ever become rich or achieved freedom working for someone else right and, and that's one of the things that uh kept spinning in my head until i gathered the the the, the courage to take the step uh, and quit and actually i quit um without a plan and my wife quit at the same time. We knew we wanted to do something else. We knew we wanted to move back to Spain. Uh, we knew that was incompatible with uh, the, the way we were living with our corporate jobs. Okay, okay, great. So you, you saw that you needed more freedom. Like that mm -hmm. was a big thing for you. And, yeah. and you wanted to um, be able to have that flexibility. You wanted to go back to Spain. And so you exactly. had these couple of different things. Okay, cool. So. Uh, what did you try? Like, what did you do, um, say, before joining the program? Like, was there anything that you tried, anything you, you were looking at? What was, like, the, um, the process or the timeline of what you were doing? Yeah, so um, during the last two years when I was still employed, I, I had a lot of ideas I wanted to materialize, uh, stuff on my own. I, I was playing with, I don't know, ideas about dropshipping, which I actually tried at some point. Um, I thought about creating a, an app with a colleague of mine and, or a platform. Uh, we had some ideas, but everything, most of the stuff requires a lot of uh, investment beforehand and a lot of dedication. I didn't want to start something while I had to work. Um, it, it was not only an eight to five job or a nine to five job. 
I work a lot of hours. I had a role of quite responsibility. So 95% of my day and my headspace was uh, dedicated to, to my job. So even if I could accommodate one hour here, one hour there to my own plans, uh, I, I would never be able to focus on things. Uh, and I would never have energy to do anything like, like that, right? That, that's why I came at some point to the realization that if I, if I want to do something on my own, I, I simply need to quit. Uh, it, it's not compatible. And it's, it's not something I would advise to, to, to everyone. Uh, you know, so people will always tell you, try to ramp down your nine to five while you're trying to ramp up and when your own gig and when you are able to compensate for your, or what you are earning the more <laughs> with your gig than with your full time, then you can make the step. I was a bit of a, I don't know. Obviously, I had some safety net there, but I just simply took the step. Both things were not compatible. So, took the step meaning you quit I your quit job. My job. Yeah. I quit okay. My job. So you quit your job. You went all in. So, what did you do when you when you quit your job? I quit my job. Uh, we went one month to Thailand. Uh, I went to relax. Uh, my wife went to do a TEFL course, which is teaching English as, as foreign language, which is quite common within people that want to live abroad, uh, mainly expats in Southeast Asia. That's, that's a common uh, path to follow. And while we were there in Thailand, um, she was studying. I was uh, always sitting by the pool with my laptop trying to figure out what is the next big thing I'm going <laughs> to invest my my time on trying to find uh, products to drop ship, uh, trying to download courses on everything imaginable, things that before I never had the time to learn. And it's when I actually uh, found uh, James Ad on Facebook. And at this point, I thought it was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I was a bit skeptic. So I was just like, ah, this ad is pretty well done. I would like to do ads like this, but I didn't know the advertising was also about uh, creating your own agency to run ads. <laughs> uh, so step by step, I started to research a bit more. What was the program about? I saw some videos. I thought everything made sense. Everything checked out. It was pretty cool. Um, I, you know, I'm very skeptical with things I see on the internet because you can find all kinds of stuff from scams to things that will give you so much value you would never believe you got that value for that price uh you, you can find uh things in both sides of the spectrum uh but i had a chat with uh with glenn and well he he showed me everything about the program he showed like he showed the community which is something i uh, cherish a lot within this group um the the modules of the training, the testimonials from other people, and I I decided to to trust it and to go with uh, with my gut and to do it. Awesome. Okay, that, that's really good rundown. Okay, so so let's let's look back at it. So you quit your job. All right. Yeah. You said you know enough is enough. You got to do something. You went to Thailand. Your wife um, started taking the the the, the course. Yeah. Yeah. And you were just, you know, looking at different opportunities, what you could do, but you were relaxing. Like you were enjoying mm -hmm. finally, like, like breaking free from the shackles of the job. Yeah. So you were definitely doing that. And that's awesome. And then, um, so then it seems like, it seems like you came across some different opportunities, some things, mm -hmm. you know, looks like they didn't work out. And then James's ad stood out. And, and then obviously, you know, it seems like when you first saw it, uh, there's some skepticism, right? Like, like you said. Yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, as, with, as with anything, yeah. And so, okay, so then you had that, but then uh, what kind of pushed you to say, maybe this is something I, you know, I could do that, that kind of got you on your call? Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I thought that every, everything that James explained on the, well, I, I don't know, in, in the landing page, there are a few videos. There are videos in which he explains a step-by-step what kind of process, what kind of training he saw some of the, lots of the material actually, I, I found it pretty valuable. And, you know, I, I'm a person that likes the DIY, do it yourself, everything. And I was saying, ah, this is something I can do myself. I don't, I don't need a training. I don't need anything. I, 
I will figure out, I will enjoy the learning. And, and then I was like, well, why would I spend, I don't know, uh, Im even if imagining that I would accomplish the same that James did, that probably I would never do in a reasonable amount of time. I was saying, why would I spend six months, nine months, one year banging my head against the wall, trying to figure out how to do this thing if uh, I can learn it from someone who has done it before, right? It, it's nonsense. Plus, I can have a community of people that are going through the same journey and share experiences, learn from them. Um, so it's going to be much faster. And at that point, everything clicked. Um, once the skepticism was out of the picture, um, during my discussion with Glenn, uh, I thought it, it made total sense. Incredible, incredible. Yeah, and it's good that you, you touch on the fact that uh, speed, like you wanted to get there faster. You didn't want to sit around yeah. and wait for it. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really huge. That's something that's a, that's a big deal that um, I know most people will, will agree with. So, okay, so, so you came to the program. Um, what was it like? Like you came into the program, what was like your first, uh, what was your journey like to getting to your first client? <laughs> Uh, that's a story I'm not very proud <laughs> about, <laughs> but I joined in April, beginning of April of last year. So at the beginning, you can imagine, I was so excited. Uh, during, I had still like two or three weeks left in Thailand. I have nothing much to do. So I was so excited to go through the, all the material week one, week two, week three. I was going through it like, uh, like, um, very, very fast, but then at some point, uh, I had to choose a niche, right? I had to choose a niche, and I know James said, yes, yeah, do something you um, feel a bit interested about or uh, interested in, or something you feel closer to you, or something you have some experience, and I was really like, I, t I tend to overthink stuff, okay? I, I, I definitely, I'm the type of person that um, which is one of the things I have learned in this training, that imperfect action, how is it? Imperfect action <laughs> is better than perfect action, but a few months later, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so I wanted to have the perfect niche and I wanted to research every niche and see which ones are going to, uh, I'm going to get the most clients and the biggest, longest retention and the most money and the less effort you know, I, I wanted to have the whole, the whole, uh, all the benefits, right? I didn't want to go with, with the first niche that crossed my mind. And then at the same time, the holidays uh, were over. We moved to Spain. We had to find a flat. Uh, we were living at my parents. Uh, I didn't feel it was, I had the right place to t start taking calls, but most of them were kind of excuses, right? Uh, I said, well, so I'm going to do a website for myself and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do that. Um, the flat situation got a bit stressful. And so then it was already September. Uh, I hadn't talked to a single, I haven't done niche research. I hadn't talked to a single client, nothing at all. Um, but at some point I say, well, enough is enough. I had almost already by then half a year, uh, of semi holidays and uh, I need to start getting serious with these and I need to start earning money because at that moment I didn't have an income right and suddenly we had a flat to, to pay <laughs> uh, that really got me moving uh, so yeah I started doing my niche research in September the first uh, guy I talked to in my niche research became my client later. I was very afraid of talking to people. I, I don't know. I was like, my first call was like, yeah, I, I don't want to sell anything. I promise. I just want to ask you some questions. I, I was feeling super awkward. Uh, but the guy was very cool. He was like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. Ask me questions and let's see how it goes. So this guy turned uh, to be my, my client later for my final, uh, final product test. Um, so yeah, that was it. So during the talking to different people for my niche research, I realized it was, it was not that difficult to talk to uh, strangers somehow. 
Um, I was also a bit worried about my language skills because I'm not a native uh, English speaker, so I didn't know if Americans would have a problem with that. Actually, they didn't much. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that there are so many people from so different backgrounds in the U.S. that they don't, they don't really care if you don't speak perfect American or if you make mistakes here and there. Uh, very tolerant. So I, I don't think that's, that was a big obstacle for myself. But yeah, uh, slowly the, the ball start, started rolling. Um, the first uh, strategy session I did, um, I actually closed it. Uh, so I was over the moon. I was so excited. I was like, man, if I close my first strategy session, I, I'm, I'm going to rock this. Like in two months, I'm going to be making, I don't know, $20,000. It's going to be crazy. Then, of course, um, reality comes and, and you realize maybe you got a bit lucky and you need to, <laughs> to keep practicing and to keep trying and to learn from your mistakes and record your um, videos and watch them and learn from other people. But, but yeah, uh, that's kind of how it started. That's amazing, man. That's, I, I'm really glad you pointed it out, kind of like the what can happen when you delay due to inaction. Right. Mm -hmm. And not, and that was a really good story. I didn't want to interrupt you because it was very good because the process of going through, like all of a sudden you start, you know, maybe you, like you said, you come up with excuses and all of a sudden months go by and then you find out, man, I didn't, I didn't do anything, you know, but then you circled around and you ended up doing it. And then you got, you know, you gained your confidence, you did it and you close it. So let's bring it up to today. Um, what have your results been so far? You know, um, how, how many clients do you have? What kind of revenue are you doing? Sure. So, um, so when I got my first client, it was back in October, which it was the, the what, what I was mentioning uh, a few seconds ago. And since then, I have been adding clients slowly, to be honest, because December was kind of slow for me. Uh, so I started this year, 2020, with two clients. Okay. It was two clients. I was doing like 2,500 per month. And I wanted to, I was setting goals for me at the beginning of the year. And I was, what do I, what do I need to do to reach the 100,000 uh, 